All right, welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you all how to get started with creating a Discord bot and developing it using the Java language. So we're going to be using the Java Discord API, also known as JDA. And JDA has been around for a very, very, very long time. And it's pretty much the go-to library that most Java developers tend to yield towards to develop Discord bots. It's been around for a while, it's stable, it works great, and it has uh, lots of updates, and lots of contributors as well. You can go over to the GitHub repository and take a look at it. Uh, and they also have a support Discord server, so if you want to check that out, uh, it's on the GitHub uh, link. I'm going to leave a link in the description to this GitHub repository. Anyways, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's go over to the Discord platform. Let's go over to Discord, developer portal, I mean. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a Discord bot. That's the very, very first thing that you need to do. So let's click on new application. I'll just go ahead and call this Java Discord bot. It doesn't matter what we call it. Click on create. And if you want to, you can go ahead and give it an icon. I'm not going to. And what I'm going to do is I am going to go over to the bot section. I'll click on add bot. Uh, whoops. Let's go ahead and change our name real quick. Let's just call this Java, Java bot. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, create the bot. There we go. Perfect. And now I'm just going to go ahead and get my bot token. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just reset it real quick. So that way I can copy it. And you want to make sure you keep this bot token kept private. You don't want to share this with anyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my uh, notepad and I'm just going to save the bot token right over here for now. Once we write our code, I'll just put it inside somewhere in our code base. But for now, we'll just leave in that notepad file so I can reference it later. Okay, so that's pretty much that's pretty much it for uh, the first step. Now, the next step that we need to do is we need to get our bot into our Discord server. So that's going to be pretty, pretty easy. What we want to do is we want to go over to the OAuth2 section and we just go to URL generator. And all you want to do is select the bot scope and you're just going to go right over here and you can copy this URL and then just go to this URL and just paste it like, for example, paste in your in your address bar. So I'll just go to uh, let's see, let's do uh, go to URL. OK, and over here, it's going to allow you to add the bot to your Discord server. So um, you need to make sure you obviously have the managed server permission in order for this to work, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add this bot to my server. I'm gonna select the server that I want to add it to. All right, so I had just authorized the bot and now it should be in my server. As you can see, it says Java bot has, or Java bot joined the party. Okay, so it's on the server. So the next thing that we need to do is log the bot in. And to do that, we need to write some code. So uh, I'm assuming that people who are watching this video already know how to create uh, Java applications, maybe at like the basic level, but at least you're familiar with using tools like uh, IntelliJ or Eclipse. Now for this tutorial, I will be using IntelliJ because it's probably, I think I think it's the most modern in, uh, IDE that a lot of Java developers use. I know back in college, we used to use Eclipse, but um, IntelliJ has became more popular and the more go-to in the industry nowadays. So we're going to be using IntelliJ. If you don't have IntelliJ, you can download the community version. It's free. I'll leave a link in the description and it's really easy to use. I promise you it's nothing, it's nothing scary, but um, let's go ahead and go to IntelliJ. So let's go over here. And obviously, you know, like I said, I'm assuming that you have, uh, I'm assuming that people who are watching this already know how to code in Java. So I'm not going to be explaining, you know, like the basic things like what a variable is, what a method is. I'm assuming that you already know how to do that already. And if you don't, you need to learn how to code in Java first before watching this video. OK, uh, so on IntelliJ, you're going to see the screen and we're going to go ahead and click on new project. And I'm going to go ahead and name the project, whatever I want. So I'm going to call this Java Discord bot and the location. You can place this wherever you want. I'm just going to leave it in the documents folder. So this will create a folder inside the documents folder and this will have all of our project files in there and if you want to use version control if you want to enable git you can also just click on create git repository and it'll initialize that project with git for the language obviously we're going to be selecting java because we're developing a java discord bot 
uh for build system uh for so for this whole video series we will be using maven if you want to use gradle you can use gradle i personally use maven so i'm just gonna leave it as maven i don't really think it matters too much to be honest with you but it's just up to it's up to your preference uh, for the Java version, I have version 17, so that's JDK. That's the uh, uh, version 17 for the JDK. So uh, I'm going to use version 17, and um, that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and just click on uh, create, and this is going to go ahead and create the project for us. Okay, so uh, you're going to see that it immediately shows us this pom the XML file, which is pretty much the manifest file. This is where we're going to add our uh, dependencies and any other additional metadata we need for the project. Okay, so let's go over to the, uh, let me just close this uh, tab out. Okay, let me also close this out as well because we won't be needing this anymore. We're gonna go back to the repository, the GitHub repository, and you wanna go over to the download section, which you can easily just navigate to by clicking on the download link in the readme. And what you wanna do, is you want to look at uh first of all you have to determine which one which uh build system you're using are you using maven or gradle because they have examples for both okay so we're using maven so we're going to go ahead and select the dependency for maven now uh there's two different uh there's two different snippets you might be confused which one you should you should copy so it tells you right over here that this is maven without audio so i assume that this has nothing to do with the uh the audio libraries so if you don't plan on writing any code that has to deal with uh, working with the audio APIs, then you can just copy this part, okay? Um, but if you just want the whole entire package, just copy this part right over here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just copy this. And like I said, if you're using Gradle, you would copy the Gradle part over here, okay? So we're gonna go back to our IntelliJ. And let me just see if I can zoom in a little bit. I can't zoom in. All right, there we go, that should be a lot better. All right, so let's just go ahead and just paste our dependencies. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a tag over here. So it's going to be dependencies and then inside this tag, we're gonna paste that dependency right over here, okay? So by default, it didn't create it for us, but that's okay, we'll just create ourselves. And then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and change the version. So in order to get the correct version, what you should do is go over back to the GitHub repository and look at what the latest version is. So, uh, for example, if you like to use a previous version, you can go over to the releases and you can look at uh, what versions have been released. So it seems like the latest version that was released was version 5.0.0 uh, alpha. Okay. But they have also other versions that you can uh, select too. So for example, if you don't want to use version 5, or if you prefer using an older version, you can just specify what version that is, right? So for example, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the version to uh, this one right over here, version 5.0.0 hyphen alpha 0.17. And all we have to do is just copy the version right over there and go back here, replace the version like that. And that's pretty much it. All right, so now the next thing that you want to do is since we're using Maven, and again, like I said, if you're using Gradle, it's very, very identical, assuming that you're using IntelliJ. But over here, since we're using Maven, we should have this little uh, Maven button over here, the synchronize button. And if you don't, you can actually just uh, use the lifecycle methods. But what we're going to be doing is we're just going to go ahead and just click on this button over here. Okay, and what this will do is it will load changes. Um, it will load Maven changes because we have actually just installed, we're not installed, but we added new dependencies, but they need to be downloaded. Okay, we haven't downloaded the dependencies yet. So if we were to try to import classes or anything from the library itself, it wouldn't exist. Okay, because we haven't downloaded the packages yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just click on this button over here. Okay, and now you can see that we have uh, this dependencies folder before we did it, but now we do. And you can see that we have all of the dependencies, which is just one, right? We have the JDA library and the exact version right over here, which is good. All right, so now that we have that, we can just go ahead and just close this out over here. And what we can do is we can create a new class. So, uh, excuse me right over here. I didn't mean to open this. 
but we're going to go over to the Java folder. So this was created uh, for us. So we'll click on, we'll, we'll right click the Java folder. We'll hover over new and then we'll select the Java class. And I'm going to go ahead and call this Discord bot. You can call it whatever you want. It's up to you. But I'll just call this Discord bot. So let's just click on class. And it's going to go ahead and create a class for us. Okay. Now this is going to be the class uh, where we're going to have a main method. So it's going to run everything from this class main method. Okay. So shorthand, I'm just going to type PVSM or public PSVM which stands for public static void main. So again, if you're a Java developer, you should know what this does. But this is just a shortcut that creates the main method for us. So we don't have to actually manually just write everything out ourselves, which is great. And what we want to do is we want to import the JDA builder class. So this is imported automatically up top over here when I hit enter. And we're just going to go ahead and just call this, uh, I'll just call this a uh, JDA builder like that. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reference that class again. And we're going to go ahead and call the create method. Okay, so this is a static method, right? We're not creating an instance of the JDA Builder class. We're just calling the static method create. And all we're going to do, or actually, not, I'm sorry, not create. It's create default, sorry. Create default. And all we have to do is just pass an our bot token. So I'm going to go ahead and just get the bot token from the notepad file that I put in there temporarily. And I'm just going to paste that into here. Now, obviously, this is not how you should uh, leave your token in your code. Uh, but just for tutorial purposes, I would just leave it there um, for now. And in later videos, I'll show you how you can, uh, you know, put your token in like an environment variable and you can load it into the code. Because like I said, it's not recommended to leave your token inside your source code. Because if someone sees it, they can easily just hijack the token and then do bad stuff with your bot. But remember to keep this uh keep this token away from other people but i'm just going to go ahead and just declare a variable called token and i'll just assign it there and i'll just at least just put this right over here for now okay cool so now that we've done that what we want to do is we want to go ahead and call the build method okay and what this will do is this will actually uh log the bot in for us but right now it's giving us this red little squiggly line, which means that there's an error over here. And the reason why this is happening is because when you call this method, um, this method can actually throw an exception, right? So in Java, remember, we need to either manually throw the exception, but or we need to handle the exception. So we, what we could do is we can actually just uh, manually throw it by just adding the throws and then the name of the exception or the type of exception. So in this case, it can throw a login exception. So we'll just do throws login exception right over here. Okay. And if we didn't want to do this, we can also just wrap this in a try catch. It's totally up to you on what you want to uh, do. Okay. But you can see that both methods work fine. Okay. But I'm just going to go ahead and just do the first way. So throws login exception. Okay. So now let's go ahead and run this code. Now uh, you're going to see up top over here on IntelliJ that uh, there's no configuration. So if this, if you don't have any configuration, you can just click on this, uh, this green button over here, since we have our main method and this will automatically set up the configuration for you. Okay. So run this code bot on main. Okay. And you're going to see that right over here in the console or in the run console, uh, we get a bunch of uh, debug messages and it says that login was successful. And if we were to go to our discord server, we can see that the bot is online and it's, it's working. Okay. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, and also a couple other things too, is if I were to pass in an invalid token, and let me just terminate the process by clicking on that red stop button over here. Um, so, and you also like just a quick little thing. If you wanted to configure your own configuration, you would just go into the config, click on the tool button, click on plus, and you would just simply select, I believe, application. 
and then give it a name and then select the main class. It's really, really easy. IntelliJ is really not that difficult to use, but I just figured I'd mention this in case someone needed help with that. Okay, so let's just say, for example, if I were to, you know, add an invalid bot token, and let's run the code again, it's going to throw an error. You're going to see that exception in main thread, the provided token is invalid. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so that's how you can get the bot to log in. Okay, so we're going to end the video right over here. In the next video, I'm going to teach you all how to listen to events. So for example, whenever the bot is logged in, we may want to... Uh, you know, print some kind of message to the console. I'll show you how you can also handle message events as well. And then we'll get into the more uh, newer features of Discord. Not really new, but we'll work with like slash commands and, you know, adding rules to users and all like the basic stuff. So that's going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. And if you need additional help, I have a Discord server. You can go ahead and join. The link is in the description. And it's a great way for you to just get additional help from my Discord-related videos or any of my tutorials. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Peace out.